Hello and welcome to the vlog. You find me this morning looking on my iPad at various tweets to my Cruising the Cut account and also of course the comments and questions on my YouTube channel. If you've ever put a comment or question on the channel, thank you very much. It is a great pleasure in the mornings to fire it up and see what people have been saying, respond to them, get a bit of dialogue going. But one of the common questions I have been asked recently is how do you get the internet on a boat? So that's what this vlog is all about. And there are a couple of ways of doing it, I suppose. So let's start with the easiest and most obvious. And that is if you're in a marina or similar establishment, in which case they almost certainly have a Wi-Fi system that you can log into and use their bandwidth. There'll probably be some kind of token system which you pay for, that's in order to stop passing boats from freeloading, but just type in your password and you'll be online. The downside being that you're sharing that bandwidth with everyone else. So at popular times of day, the system may slow to a crawl and your porn, I mean Netflix, could be a bit stuttery. And there's another problem. The body of a narrowboat, being steel, acts as a very good block to any radio signals getting into it, such as Wi-Fi or mobile phone signals. Sometimes the only way to make contact with the outside world is to put your gadgets on the windowsill and even then reception can be patchy. So I use a mobile data dongle or MiFi device. This can sit in the well deck to pick up and rebroadcast the marina Wi-Fi into the boat or if there's no local Wi-Fi it uses the mobile phone data network. The one I've got is made by Huawei and sold by EE you get a SIM card to go into it just like a phone, but it's data only, no calls. As you can see, it comes in a rather girly blue box. On the back of the box, lots of boasts about what it can do. It says you can connect smartphones, tablets and so on. It says there's an app which you can download to control the device, and I'll show you that in a minute. It also says up to 10 Wi-Fi devices can connect at a time and it supports both the 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi-Fi systems, whatever they are. It also points out it supports 3 and 4G. There are some notes about not forgetting the Wi-Fi password and then basic instructions which are put in the SIM card, switch the device on, type the Wi-Fi key that it gives you into your tablet or phone and bosh, you're connected. So let's get this open. You can see it's a very slim and lightweight device. There's an on-off button here, a signal strength indicator here, and a battery icon there. There's a USB charging port because, of course, this thing is battery operated and needs charging just like a phone. On the edge here, there's a little flap which opens to reveal two tiny sockets into which you can plug an external aerial for better reception, but they cost around 50 quid. Also in the box you get a charging lead, but no actual charger. Any standard USB charger like the one for your phone will do though. And there's also a load of bump, which nobody ever reads. Finally, here's the battery, 1500 milliamp hours, which needs to go into the back of the MiFi device. That back just snaps off if you run a fingernail round it, and you can see there's the slot for the battery, and at the bottom right, the slot for the SIM card. The card just slots into place under the little metal strap and it can only go in one way, so you can't get it wrong, unless you try really hard, in which case you may break it. The battery next, that just snaps into place and finally the lid goes back on top. Although the battery lasts several hours, I do find it better to use an external battery pack. These are very cheap and have a much bigger capacity, so I charge that overnight and then plug it into the MiFi, which then lasts all day. Here's the Huawei app. You can see I'm on a 50 gigabytes per month data plan and I've got 41 gigs left. I'm also receiving two bars of 4G signal. How fast is that in practice? Well, pretty decent actually. The free speed test app tells you all you need to know. Of course, the speed will vary depending on where you are and how good the signal is from the phone network. But in this case, I'm getting more than 20 megabits download, which is on a par with most home broadband. Upload is less impressive, but it always is, sadly, just under 2 megabits here. But that's OK to upload videos, as long as you're prepared to let the computer sit and get on with it for a couple of hours. 
Of course, how fast the Marina Wi-Fi is if you connect to that instead, well, that just depends on the Marina. So that is how you get the internet on a narrowboat. Do hope it was useful and interesting and not too nerdy. Any comments or questions, leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.